Greetings, people of the internet. I am Lucha Man, and welcome to Lucha Man Reviews. Uh, I'm going to be covering the Stephen Bomb 2016 Summer of Stephen special. I thought we had a week off before the next episode started, but uh, I was wrong. So here's what. I'll also be covering the latest episode. Now, if you've uh, spent the last two weeks under a rock, uh, I gotta warn you, there might be some spoilers. So I'm just gonna give like a the title of the episode and a quick overview of it. I'll give it a, fu a star a rating. Five is amazing, four is great, no. Five is amazing, four is good, three is uh, fair, two I'm on the fence about, and one I didn't like. Okay, so uh, first episode, Steven Floats. It's a goofy episode, Steven gets a new power, I give it four stars. And the next episode was uh, Drop Beat Dad. Greg's uh, old band manager, Marty comes into town, tries to hang out with his son, not really, and has to legally give Greg $10 million for a song that he wrote. Pretty good episode, love the use of secondary characters and a flashback character. Four stars. Mr. Greg. Um, it's a musical episode, and I like it because Greg doesn't become a jerk just because he's rich, and he also doesn't lose all of his money by the end of the episode, so they avoided those two tropes. Very happy for that. Uh, the musical episode, is, it's great. So it's Steven, Greg, and Pearl. I like this one because it's always been kind of a frigid, tense, static relationship with Pearl and Greg. Uh, but uh, they have some closure in this episode. Sorry, my mask is a little funny today. Uh, five stars. Too short to ride. Uh, Steven and Amethyst hang out with Peridot at Funland. Uh, Peridot reveals that she is unable to shapeshift. Why? Because on Homeworld, uh, they're running out of materials, so she is a second generation Peridot, which is why she had the uh, robotic arms and legs. Uh, we then discover that she actually has metal manipulation powers. I think it's either because of her lack of uh, metamorphosis, uh, shape-shifting, or because of the limit answers, I can't tell, but uh, this is interesting, very insightful episode, four stars. The new Lars. Uh, Steven inadvertently takes over Lars' body via the sleep dream uh, power he has. We learn about Lars, his back life, his, his backstory, uh, where he lives, his education, and how the world sees him when Steven's in charge. And then how the world sees him when he's no longer in charge. I didn't really like this episode. I gave it one star. And I'll be honest, this, this was the first... Uh, this is not the first time I gave I would give one star to a Steven Universe episode. There is one other episode that I just really do not like. I know there's other differing opinions, but this is my review show and you came to watch it, so sorry. Beach City Drift. Steven and Connie fuse into uh, Stefani to race against Kevin in a uh, race downhill to a parking lot. Kind of like a Grant, kind of like a <sighs> Need for Speed. Uh, Kevin was the jerky guy who hurt, who hit on Stefani back in Alone Together, and it's weird. Even though Stephen has a right to be have a grudge against uh, Lars, and not counting the last episode, but before several episodes beforehand, this is the only one where Stephen seems out of characterly, out of characterly uh, grudge holding, vengeful, not too happy with a character. This just seems wrong. Uh, so I give it one and a half stars. Uh, Restaurant Wars. Uh, Steven inadvertently orders something that causes the French fry place and fish stew pizza to reignite an old war, an old feud they had. <sighs> Steven tries to settle peace with it by having Ronaldo pretend to date Kiki, which results in Ronaldo's real girlfriend finding out and dumping him. Okay, Steven Universe staff, what's going on here? This is I give this episode one and a half stars. This is like the third episode in a row that I just didn't like. All they were like all very lackluster. What's going on here? Kiki's Pizza Delivery Service. Uh, after the feud has been resolved, Kiki is uh, having nightmares, and we can all see from a mile away what's causing the nightmares. Fortunately, Steven acts as some kind of dream warrior to help her, and then eventually a counselor to help her settle things with her, her with uh, what's causing these nightmares. It's fair, so I give it three stars. Monster Reunion. Steven's healing powers are back, so he tries to cure Centipedal. Centipedal, uh... She's kind of cured, but it still needs some work. By the end of the episode, she is back with uh, those that uh, with her crew, 
We learned that she was on Earth before the Gem War and was caught up in it. And then something happened which caused uh, uh, the end of the war. We also get a glimpse at the uh, writing, the written language of the Gems. And we get some backstory and a very clever narration of how the war was illustrated. I give it five stars. Very good episode. Alone at Sea. Steve, Steven, uh, Steven's dad rents a boat for the day. He doesn't want to buy one because even though he's rich, that'd be like something he doesn't need. So I like how Greg is has money, but he's not being a, not being flamboyant uh, about it with the uh, flaunting it about. Yeah. So they decide to help cheer up L L Lapis and uh, show her how the ocean is still a great place. They're trying to help her re reintegrate with the world. Now this episode, I like it. I give it three and a half stars. It's fair because Lapis is kind of a downer, but they're trying to. You, but she has a right to be. And here's the thing, this might go over some of the younger viewers' heads, but uh, when Jasper comes back, here's what Jasper comes back in this episode, and they do a very clever way of, des of describing and illustrating how people who have been in an abusive relationship might act while and then after getting out and the possibility of getting back in. Very clever writing here, so I think I know where everyone was uh, for those three episodes that were very low on the sco scoreboard. Greg the Babysitter. Steven is hanging out with his dad, and he's trying to figure out how did he get a job here at the car wash? In exchange for Greg eating her food and staying at her place while he gets his clothes cleaned, agrees to watch uh, uh, sour cream. Rose Quartz, she never had a correlation between a full-grown adult and like an infant baby that were the same species. She thought they were two different things. We learned that all gems pop out of the ground fully grown, and they are fully aware of what they can do and what they're supposed to do. It's a pretty interesting insight into the gym culture. And then some shenanigans ensue with the typical babysitter has to save baby from destruction. And then Greg has like a moment of, he has like an epiphany about himself. He returns uh, a, a sour cream to Vidalia and figures he has to now start being an adult. And that's how he gets uh, the car wash job. I like this, another very insightful episode. But a little more entertaining than uh, the uh, Alone at Sea. I give it... Five stars. Gem Hunt. After training with Steven and uh, Pearl and having the uh, Nightmare Hospital incident, Connie is now joining Steven and Pearl on an actual gem mission. Steven and Connie get separated from Pearl, they split up, and Connie freezes. She actually has uh, the fear because even though she's been training, the real life experience is completely different. But uh, hopefully she'll be better prepared for next time, especially since Jasper was involved. I give it four stars. Crack the whip. Uh, okay, so Garnet and Pearl go to look for Jasper while leaving Amethyst to train Steven and Connie. They have some fun and then Jasper appears with a with a corrupted gem. Uh, Stefani comes out and she's actually like a human rose quartz working the sword and the shield because of her training. Jasper beats up uh, Amethyst pretty well, comparing her to how she's a runt, but how she's the better better uh, better gem. It's kind of depressing for Amethyst, but uh, it's a pretty good episode for Steven and Connie, and they do manage to beat her back, so I give it four stars. Steven versus Amethyst. Uh, there be, this be the episode with direct fallout from the previous episode. Steven, while Steven continues to do good, and in fact get better with his powers, Amethyst is getting beaten by him, and is, of course, losing self-confidence. The two of them actually fight, and they figure out that neither of them is perfect, and they still have their flaws in some areas. I wasn't really too wild about this episode. And Steven has a point of how even how he used to be the worst gym of the group, and now things are getting crazy because Amethyst thinks that she's the worst. So I give it three stars. Bismuth. The 100th episode of Steven Universe. Uh, there's some discrepancy there, I'm not going to go into it. We discover there was another original crystal gem at the start of the war. Her name is Bismuth. She used to build uh, structures for the elites, and now she fights and builds weapons. She upgrades uh, Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl's uh, main weapons. And then, I wanted to love this episode. I really wanted to, but it was like for the first 80%. The last 20% is where the episode falls flat. She made a weapon that was able to destroy gems. But, of course... Ruby, uh, Rose didn't want that, so she got poofed and bubbled. Steven then has to also reject the weapon, poof her, bubble her, but he actually explains to the gems what really happened to her. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure at some point this will come back to uh, kick them in the face. Like, either one of the gems will get seriously hurt, or something will happen to his dad, or Connie, and... This... No one was right, and no one was wrong in this episode. It was just really depressing, so... I wanted to enjoy it, but the last part just brought me down. I give it three stars. Fair. Beta. Okay, uh, Amethyst is still feeling depressed about her... about, uh, losing Jasper. She wants to get stronger. They actually go and speak with, uh, Par Paradot, who says how she came from the Beta Kindergarten. So, Jasper is from Earth also. Also, we find out what happens. Jasper and Lapis are creating art, or Glip Glop, or Gleep Glorp. It's very interesting. The Beta Kindergarten was supposed to be a slapdash job, and we actually find out... She... Jasper is the Alpha, the primary, the best to come from that, uh, kindergarten. Very... this is a very good episode. I give it four stars. Earthlings! Uh, Amethyst starts to fight Jasper and things aren't going too well until she and Steven fuse together to become Smoky Quartz. Uh, Jasper, in a bid to try to stop them, fuses with a corrupt gem, who then... who they then unfuse, and she starts to become corrupted herself. She refuses Steven's healing ability, still saying how this is what Rose does. Waits till gems have lost everything, their purpose, their status, or if they're defective of some sort, before Rose will help them. So then Ro uh, Jasper says she fights because of what Rose did to her colony, to her planet, and to her diamond. Wait, yellow diamond? No, my diamond, your diamond, pink diamond! So... Yeah, Jasper is ranting and raving before she is poofed and bubbled. And then we get back to the barn and find the rubies are back from Neptune. Uh, five stars. Back to the moon. Uh, the rubies, uh, they couldn't find Jasper. Surprise, surprise. So then Amethyst shapeshifts to look like Jasper and says she's captured all the crystal, crystal gems and they have to make a report. Uh, so then we hear stories about how the rubies are admiring Jasper for what she did during the wars. We see the, uh, we see, we go back to the moon where we've been before. We see the, the mural of Pink Diamond. And we are here how Rose Quartz, one of the rubies says, Rose Quartz smashed Pink Diamond. Stephen hears this from the ruby that seems relatively calm, and Pearl involuntarily shudders. And then, at some point, Stephen gets shot out of an airlock along with the rubies, so this episode ends on a cliffhanger. I thought this was a very interesting way for this episode, and now we've had some confirmation that Rose Quartz did smash a diamond. I give it, uh, four stars. Bubbled! Steven is in space, in his bubble that's protecting him, and he picks up one of the rubies, and they're able to talk to each other, despite space being a vacuum. Uh, there's been other episodes of that. Not too much really happens in this episode. Uh, we learn more... The ruby reveals more about Rose, and actually tries to attack Steven. Steven is able to survive and is saved by the Crystal Gems. And then he actually asks Garnet, who admits that Ruby, that uh, Rose didn't do always what was best for herself, but always what was best for Earth. And so she did... it is... Yeah, so... Ro I do like Rose, and I've seen her through the rose-tinted glasses, but... I don't know, some stuff... I'm starting to get a little jaded. It's kind of like how... In the episode, Can We Talk, she said it's a good thing that Greg doesn't know anything about her. Three stars, it's fair. The Kindergarten Kid, or as I like to call it, Cartoon Network has fully accepted and embraced Steven Universe and is letting this happen. Uh, the gems are proofing all the corrupted gems. Uh, Amethyst makes a good point. I can't believe, well, first Pearl says, I can't believe uh, Jasper was putting these gems in cages. And Amethyst says, Pearl says that, and then Amethyst says, isn't that what we do? And then it's pointed out that they do pretty much the same thing. It's just that they poof them and put them in the bubble so they can't hurt anyone. Uh, there is a blue, blue corrupted gem. It's running around on two legs very fast. And they're in the desert, and Paradox is supposed to be a smart one. It's like Wile E. Coyote. It's... This episode's pretty much an homage to Wile E. Coyote. And then, uh, at the end they actually catch the gem. And Peridot bubbles it and sends it to home, which is the barn. And her bubbles are green. It's fair, I give it three stars. No your fusion. This is the last episode of the Summer of Steven special, before we get back to normal. Steven and 
Amethyst Reveal to Pearl and Garnet. Smoky Quartz. Pearl is, is surprised, but Garnet, who is the walking embodiment poster child for a fusion between two separate gems, is overjoyed by this. Uh, they become sardonyx to try to figure out what, and they have like a TV special thing to try to figure out what makes Smoky Quartz so awesome. Unfortunately, it doesn't really help, uh, it, does, it doesn't work out too well, but by the end of the episode, they show that, uh, they, oh, they don't have, like, the abilities like the other gem fusions. They have their own abilities, their own unique talents. It's a really, really well done episode. I give it five stars. Highly recommend. And finally, Buddy's book. Uh, Stephen, Connie takes Stephen to a library, to which he's never been before. He loves it because of all the books. And they find a book written by Buddy, who was the first mate on uh, Captain Dewey's ship when they discovered Beach City. Uh, Buddy wants to be an explorer himself and have his name remembered throughout history. And he discover goes around and visits all the gem landmarks, and there's like some illustrations in there. It's a pretty... I really like this episode. We see the gems in their attire from the old days, which is very reminiscent from what they looked like in the picture of uh, So Many Birthdays. Except for a rose, but yeah, that's different. Um, the episode, episode is really good, and... I liked it. It was really funny, especially how they pictured uh, Buddy being like that of uh, Jeremy. When we see Buddy's real picture, it's uh, completely different. It's a great episode, and I don't want to give too many details or spoilers, but uh, it's very good. I highly recommend you watch it. I give it five stars. Whew. All right, well, I know, this I know this video was a long one. I apologize for that. I just wanted to try something different. Yeah, I won't be doing more Steven Universe episodes or Steve... If it's a regular five five episode week, I might do that, but this was just this was a really hard one to make. And test subject one three seven, he'll be up later with uh, his review of No Man's Sky, his first impression. So thank you for watching and sticking with us for this long. Until next time, this has been Luchaman for Luchaman Review, saying thank you for watching and have a nice day.